Time to rock. Good evening, good morning, good afternoon to everyone who's watching from all around the world. I'm your friendly neighborhood philosopher, David Wood. And with me now is the Lioness for Christ. Hatun Tash. <laughs> I wouldn't say that, but huh? peace, peace of Christ be with you, brother. Uh, how you doing, Hatun? By God's grace, I'm good, thank you. How are you? Good, 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 good. Um, yeah, actually, haven't been... Yeah, I kind of hear my echo there. Oh, there we go. Um, yeah, I don't think I've been live on my channel in a couple of weeks. So there is a lot to cover. Have you been have you been have you been following everything that's been going on Hatun? Cuz I know I know stuff's kind of busy for you <laughs> over there. So I'm wondering I'm wondering how much you've been following. So for instance, my arch nemesis Menj, who has his channel, The Muslim Apologist, um, who declared war on me. He's posted multiple videos and is always coming after me. In fact, this guy goes way back to before people had uh, heard about either either one of us. Uh, way back to the early 2000s, the, the website Answering Islam. You could go there. A ton of the articles were directed towards Menj and his team and turns out a couple days ago it was all over the malaysia news menj got arrested for child pornography you hear about you hear about uh, that one yes uh i heard that and i saw some of the um things about it so a follower of islam decided to practice some of the actions of islam yep and so we don't know whether he was looking at pictures of little boys or little girls or whatever <laughs> Maybe he's looking at pictures of little boys sucking on tongues like his prophet. Or maybe little girls. Who knows? Creepy stuff. Wow. You hear? See, this is what's messed up. Like, these guys keep getting locked up. <laughs> Child pornography charges. <laughs> Who are we going to respond to? So, I guess you are upset that now you don't have someone who can defend Islam. Yeah, I mean, Menj was the best of the best. And best of the best is in prison because of the pornography, uh, he's child a, pornography. Yeah, he's actually out on uh, out on bail because he's been posting threats of himself uh, holding a knife, saying that he's going to chop the heads off of uh, Rob Christian, something like that. Hmm. I wonder where we got the idea, that idea coming after Rob Christian's head. Huh. Wild Very stuff. peaceful religion. <laughs> wild wild stuff so so that's what we had with menj and then you know you know ijaz ahmed because he's been to speaker's corner and you had some yes. you had some discussions with him and then did you catch that did you see that in the recent news ijaz called uh called someone uh a racial slur he called him a wetback he doxed him uh gave out his personal information and said you will be found you will be found um, did you, did you, you guys hear about that over there? Uh, yes, um, I have seen some, um, short clips on it, but it's, um, that's not, I'm surprised when, once he was at Speaker's Corner. Actually, he's done similar things in the past. Um, actually, he, he made a video revealing my full details as well as at Speaker's Corner, he told everyone that I killed my brothers just before we start debating with those informations he thinks like oh yeah now like those people know i know about everything therefore mm -hmm. no one will ever challenge me yeah i did hear about that as well so that's it just and and i notice a lot of the a lot of the current meltdowns that we're seeing everywhere started it all seemed to start with the infamous holes in the narrative interview right like <laughs> And and I I should probably make a I should probably make a video on this tomorrow because I need to get back to making videos. If anyone wonders where I've been, I've been we've we've been doing some traveling and stuff and uh, so, but um, <laughs> guys, if you've been following this story all all along, Hatun is the main reason for the holes in the narrative interview. Now you 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 can be humble and say that's that's not the case, but we we all know that's the case. We for for more than a decade before anyone heard of Hatun Tash, we were all going around quoting Muslim sources, quoting Muslim sources, uh, talking about all the changes in the Quran and so on, and then never worked until 
until you <laughs> took a bunch of <laughs> uh, took a bunch of Qurans, got the bright idea of taking a bunch of Qurans, different Qurans with different words, and putting them in their faces at Speaker's Corner and saying, "Do you see that this word is different from this word, and that this is the same verse in two different Qurans? Do you see that?" So, uh, for, for for anyone who's who's new here, uh, go ahead and give a little background onto the uh, uh, th that whole that whole story. So I think that was before 2016. Um, so I was in a um, North African country where I was doing some work with missionaries, and missionaries asked me like, which Quran is the best uh, stuff? So we went to this small bookshop to buy Quran, and um, when we asked for the Quran. The guy said, which Quran do you want? I was like, what do you mean? He said, do you want wash Quran? Do you want half Quran? Which Quran do you want? From that, I was like, oh, I'll get the, uh, both of them. Because I didn't even know like what was happening in that moment. Um, the wash Quran was only like one pound or something. So I got one, both of them. And then I got back to UK. And then I start like, oh, like, let me check what is this. So I start comparing the letters. So I can recite certain Arabic uh, chapter stuff, Quranic chapters, but I'm not Arabic speaker. So I start comparing the letters and then I notice, oh, they, they don't look same. And then I did ask Arabic speaker to confirm if they are the same or not. And then I went through some and then uh, we saw actually, no, they were different from one another and meaning were different and the name of the Quran was different. From that, uh, I think the second Quran was from Nigeria. Um, and then, like, I ended up having 26 different Arabic Qurans. And then um, I did, uh, in that time, I was working with Jay. And I just like, okay, Jay, look, there are different Arabic Qurans. And then we took them to Speaker's Corner in 2016. I would say it didn't go down well, because even that time, plus today, Muslims still believe there is only one Quran, dot by dot, letter by letter, sound by sound, it's exactly the same. So that didn't go well. And since then, I'm like using those Qurans as a um, physical evidence. Um, Muslims have been lied for centuries because mm -hmm. there is more than different um, one Arabic Quran and they are all around accessible to everyone. Yeah, and uh, so... I saw that video. Um, so this was three years ago. So notice how, notice this is very quick. This is all very quick. This is a very short period of time for all this to happen. So you said 2016, you start yeah, finding out about these different Qurans. And then the video, um, the video that I saw with you and Jay showing up with all these different Qurans, that was three years ago because I'm looking at it right now. Um, I, I reposted a clip of that five minutes and 40 seconds, and it has 1.2 million views on my channel. So, you know, with Muslims, you're talking about 1.6 billion Muslims. And even the Muslims who see this video still won't be convinced. It takes a while yeah. to sort of, to sort of get them out of that view. But what it looks like it happened is that, um, the, you know, Muhammad Hijab and so on, they wouldn't, you know, they wouldn't let on how bothered they were by this, but they were clearly bothered by it. And then... Yeah, mm -hmm. so the, when when I was up on the ladder with, the, uh, with Jay, so we had crowds, they were like curious, like because Jay was holding this Quran, and then first they start saying, oh, their cover is different color, all those things. And then crowd was getting bigger and bigger. And then Muslim missionary Mohammed Hijab comes and then takes all those crowd away. And then they've got this saying, if you don't come now, if you are not Muslim anymore, that's like very common these days. So you, uh, so people kind of moved forward. That was the first time they expressed they didn't like the different Arabic Qurans. Um, and even though like since then, I quite often I take different Arabic Qurans to speakers corner, Muslims would look at the differences like they can see arabic is different it is written differently meaning is differently and they would still like look into your eyes and then they would say 
oh no it's the same it's, mm. it's just the same it's just a different recitation yeah that's just like singular that is just pruler that's just one letter one word but until a couple of months ago when it's been expressed there are holes in the narrative mm -hmm. and so and, and, and by, by the way, notice, e even even a Muslim acknowledging, oh, yeah, well, that's just, you know, that's just singular or plural or something like that. Even that completely refutes a bunch of the Muslim apologetics books I have on my shelves because those books over and over again say not one letter of difference. Sheikh Yasser Qadi, who is the one who admitted that there are holes in the narr narrative, I have video clips of him saying not one difference since the time of Uthman in any Quran manuscript. And so... Uh, what, what happened with the, once we had the, the infamous holes in the narrative interview where Muhammad Hijab is finally trying to figure out how he's going to uh, calm Muslims down and tell them, yes, there's, there's only one Quran, gets Yasser Qadi on his live stream and wants to get Yasser Qadi to say, yes, there's only one Quran. We know what we're talking about. There are no problems. Uh, it's easy. Um, if you gave me some blank p pieces of paper right now, I could give you exactly, exactly what the original Quran is. And Yasser Qadi wouldn't say it. All he would say is that, uh, he, matter of fact, he's saying he can't say that and that there are holes in the narrative and so on. And basically everything started breaking down right then because that's when these guys, they were really exposed as complete liars, that all the people have been running around saying perfect preservation right down to the letter. There's only two possibilities. One, you were ignorant, so why were you even talking? Or, or two, you, were, you did know what you were talking about, and you're a liar. So you're, you're either ignorant or you're a liar. All, all of you Muslim apologists who've been saying perfect preservation, you were either ignorant or you were lying. Which one is it? People started making fun of them, holes in the narrative, everyone's using the clips, and then all these Muslim apologists start having mental breakdowns. I mean, they just start losing it. Hijab with the golden showers and stuff like this, and then uh, telling people to commit suicide and going after people's wives. And now you've got uh, Ijaz, and he's doxing people and using racial slurs. And then, uh, you know, Menj, he couldn't take it, and he, start, he turned to child pornography. He's like, oh, I can't do apologetics anymore. I'm just going to uh, focus on my child porn here. And so everyone's just having a complete mental breakdown. Islam does those things. Yeah, and so we are we are right in the middle of the breakdown of Islamic apologetics, and it's a good good time to it's a good time to be here. And so um, you've been part of. I mean, I regard it as part of the the breakdown recently when seems like a crowd formed. <laughs> well, here, here's what here's what it seems like, right? All of this started at Speaker's Corner with you and all these Qurans, and then. Um, everyone starts having a breakdown. And so there's special hostility directed towards you at Speaker's Corner. And it looks like the new strategy is just to, to riot until there's no more Speaker's Corner or something like that. So go ahead and tell us what, what happened. Well, tell us about what you've been doing at Speaker's Corner so people know the context and we're fair and forthright in, in what. So tell us what you've been sharing at Speaker's Corner and then we'll, we'll, we'll get to the incident from... Uh, from week before that, this past one. Okay, I think you are just like blaming me <laughs> above all with all those breakdowns. So it wasn't me. It was you. You did all the breakdowns. You're responsible for all these mental <laughs> breakdowns. No, it was the uh, Muslim missionaries who thought it was all right to lie for centuries and centuries to individuals, and I was just a small vehicle in that one mm -hmm. to expose that. Um. So um, since uh. When um, Yasser Qadi expressed that there are holes in the narrative um, regarding the different Arabic Qur'an's preservation of the Qur'an and the crowd, all those kind of things. And when he expressed, uh, it is not that simple if he's given a blank paper to write the Qur'an. He wouldn't know like which crowd he's going to write. Uh, that was complicated. So I, I've been asking. So that happened during the lockdown. And I've been going to Speaker's Corner since end of May or beginning of June, uh, because we had lockdown. I've been asking the same question to the Muslim missionaries to explain it to me. And I don't know why Speaker's Corner is the place where it's a unique place for freedom of speech. It is a very big uh, part of this great country uh, where you go and then everyone would 
everyone is there to hear different view, expose different view, get challenge and debate. So it's like, you know what, what will happen. But in somehow Muslims haven't been answering my questions. Okay. In the beginning, I was just so kind. I took like, um, shake Yasika with me. This is, uh, someone draw him to the London streets. Okay. I took this. So, and so, then... so that, that was, that was on a street. Someone drew that on a street. Yeah, in Trafalgar Squares, um, we do have street artists, so mm -hmm. someone drew this on the street, and then we've got the same for Shabir Ali, as well as we've got the um, Holy God pictures. But anyway, so I took this to Speaker's Corner, and I was simply asking, Sheikh Yasekadi used to be very famous at Speaker's Corner, but now no one knows him. Okay, everyone denies him, he's like, not mm -hmm. <laughs> he's like suddenly turned blank in the paper and no one wanted to answer my questions and what i have done is i wanted to get um visual aid this is not the one but it was similar to this so i got a quran and then i put holes in the quran and then i asked muslims if they can explain me about the holes in the narrative um and first couple of weeks that went okay actually no before that also i had um i shouldn't miss I had shredded Quran, so I had the Quran with the um, holes in it, and then you've got Akbar. So Quran, Quran has holes, and the argument is if you believe Muhammad is prophesied in the songs of Solomon, because the sound looks like, then we could simply say Allah Akbar means Allah's mouth. Okay, so that was the, for that illustration. Yeah, let, let me let me just break that down for because uh, Sam Shimon and I have talked about that on the program before. So, ladies and gentlemen, the uh, the the idea is there. Song of Muslims uh, are desperate to find Muhammad in the Bible, and so one of the most common ones they use is Song of Solomon five sixteen, and they use that because uh, there's a word there, Mahmadim, and they say, oh, that that sounds like Muhammad, so that means Muhammad, ignoring the fact that that word occurs in many places in the Old Testament, and ignoring the fact that in in all the other places, it would make absolutely no sense to say that this refers to Muhammad. So for instance, Eze the prophet Ezekiel's wife is referred to as Mahmad uh, because it means something beloved or lovely, right? And so if you say, nope, it's actually Muhammad, it's the name Muhammad, then you'd, then Muhammad, great, Muhammad was Ezekiel's wife. So Muhammad was in a a uh, very strange relationship, and Muhammad was a kind of time-traveling, um, I don't know, what do you want to call him? Time-traveling gay marriage person? What, what, do you, what, what do you want to call him? Anyway, so the, it wouldn't work in the vast majority of places, but they go to Fa so Song of Solomon 5.16, uh, where it's translated as altogether lovely, but since the word is, is Mahmud, they say, up, oh, it's Muhammad, and so this is actually a prophecy of Muhammad. And so the, the claim is, hey, this word sounds like Muhammad, and therefore it's actually talking about Muhammad, even though these are different languages. And so what Hatun just pointed out is that if you go down that road, hey, this word sounds the same, therefore it's, it's the same thing. The word Akbar in Hebrew means mouse. And so when Muslims, ye when Muslims yell, Allahu Akbar, if you're using that, we call that the phonic fallacy. It sounds like it, so it's the same thing. Then when Muslims say Allahu Akbar, they're saying Allah is a mouse. And so, so, so <laughs> Hatun has kind of a double whammy there. One, she has the holes in the Quran, but she has a mouse uh, going with a Swiss cheese uh, motif. And she has a mouse and the mouse has Akbar written on it because that's what that, that's, that's Hebrew. That's Hebrew for, for mouse. Okay. Just wanted to give everyone the background so they understand. So that's some hard hitting stuff when you're putting it, when you're showing it to Muslims saying, Hey, you you have holes in the narrative. You have holes in the arguments. And if we take you guys seriously, your God is a mouse. Now tell us more about the wonderful religion of Islam. Uh, by the way, uh, I'm doing these things at speaker's corner, the place it is uniqueness for the freedom of speech and i'm not doing this in front in in front of the mosque or in a mosque mm -hmm. but at speaker's corner it is according to law it is allowed mm -hmm. it is allowed and people as individuals come to speaker's corner they know they are going to be confronted they know they are going to be exposed of course while i am showing those pictures i am i am having debates and discussions with muslims 
how my God needed to go to the bathroom. Mm -hmm. They are mocking my God. They are ask, they are telling me, oh, your God had a sex with all those kind of things. Your God didn't mm -hmm. die. So it's the same thing. They just don't have the visual aid. Mm -hmm. So um, that's the, like other tool I was using. And that wasn't helping either because still Muslims were intentional to not answer my questions. And then... Wait, so 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 you were asking about the, the holes in the narrative and they wouldn't answer your questions. Yeah. Now, yeah. now, guys, just, just think about how important this is, right? I mean, th this is massively important. Uh, just, just think about this. Muslims for years say, perfect preservation right down to the letter. Then Sheikh Yasser Qadi admits, eh, we got some problems here. And Hatun goes around saying, can you please just clarify this for me? Just, just tell me what, what, what is this? What is this? Explain to me how you believe and claim perfect preservation, and yet there are somehow holes in the nerve. Can you explain it? And it looks like from the videos I've seen, all they do is run from you. And think, if, if they really had answers, ladies and gentlemen, if they really had answers, why would they just not answer it? Instead, they run. Okay, I just wanted to point that out, that if this were easy to explain, we would expect them to just give the answers and they give none, so... So I, actually, I must express that I was expecting some of Muslim missionaries to not answer my questions, but some of the Muslim missionaries to engage with me because they have taught about it. They made sessions about it. So I went to those Muslim missionaries and then I asked them to explain to me holes in the narrative. They didn't engage with me. And what I've done was I simply put holes in the Quran and then to make get a visual aid. Yes, there are holes in the narrative. Can someone help me have to fix this? And still Muslim missionaries weren't talking to me. I took actually also, I took a notebook with um, pretending that's the empty Musaf. I asked Muslim missionaries if they can write the Quran, which Quran they would write. That didn't even work. And so it's been like a couple of months. We are trying to get the hole fixed. Mm -hmm. And we are trying to get it fixed because Muslims are still telling us, oh, no, it's all like still one Quran. There is still one Quran, but it just doesn't make sense to me. Um, I know like women are half brain, they're deficient stuff, but still it should be very simple for women like me to understand. Mm -hmm. That didn't go well. And two weeks ago, uh, a Muslim thought it was simply all right to take my book uh, holes in the Quran uh, without my permission at Speaker's Corner. And then he got lots of praises by Muslims so doing so. And then I've got a couple of my brothers got punched in that kind of trying to rescue my Quran back, but Quran never got back. Now, did that, did that guy show back up? Because, I mean, he was, I saw the video that, I saw the video. He's very clearly on the video running away with your Quran. Ha ha, I got, I got her Quran now. Now, now Islam is saved. <laughs> I, I think I think that's what he thought. I don't even know what he done. Probably he used that Quran to hold the flowers or something in it because that hole was done very nicely. Mm -hmm. But anyway, um, I haven't seen him um, since that was like two Sunday ago. He hasn't been. I haven't seen him at Speaker's Corner. And not last Sunday, but a Sunday before. Uh, I so it was also the same time where in France. Um, people are discussing the uh, Charlie Hebdo um, event where eight journalists were killed um, simply because they draw the picture of Muhammad. So I thought I will bring that to attention of Muslims at Speaker's Corner and ask the question, what happened to the freedom of speech? And in the like day, like journey today, it was like all going kind of all right. Muslims were kind of um, some of the people said, oh, it's, it has nothing to do with Islam. Some of the people said, oh, you can't draw the pictures. Some of the people run away. But um, so I so that day I focused on the holes in the Quran and the Charlie Hebdo uh, pictures. By evening, like we, I was just like wrapping up to leave. Suddenly we got like Muslims just walked into the group and it all messed up. Uh, I was kind of, I was told if I don't leave the speakers going, I will get arrested. And then that was like kind of end of the day. I was like shuffled out from speakers corner, apparently for my safety. And 
another Sunday holes in the narrative without answer, as well as Charlie Hebdo and why would Muslims take away the freedom of speech, got zero answer. So another day at Speaker's Corner. And uh, um, one, one, more, uh, one more part of this recent story. Um, you were approached by, I guess, what, police or agents or something like that who were telling you that you were... So this would have been a couple weeks ago. Did, did, did they? I heard they showed up and warned you about uh, that there was a threat on your life or something like that if you went back, something like that? I, uh, so um, Saturday, just before Speaker's Corner, the day before Speaker's Corner, around 6 o'clock on the 22nd of August, I've got these um, two officers turns up my door outside of the work hours and then expresses to me that apparently uh certain people group are uh feeling they've been insulted i'm being insulting their religion when i say muhammad is false prophet and um, or when i show the pictures um that and i'm through that uh muslims are currently following my youtube activities and they are not happy about it my return to speaker's corner um, I need to be aware that my life is under the danger. Therefore, they're advising me to not go to Speaker's Corner. Mm -hmm. So that's a day before Speaker's Corner. I'm it, just like, so in that, sorry, in that what is happening is, so there are holes in the narrative. There are problems with the different Arabic Qurans. And Muslims are simply, I don't want to be mean, but it seems to me they are going to the police and then they are saying, we cannot answer the questions. What we've got to do is, we need police to step in and uh, stop her coming to speaker's corner. And <laughs> this is just, this is like, uh, I'm trying not to laugh, but this is the most pathetic thing I've ever heard in my entire life. For 14 centuries, for 14 <laughs> centuries, Armies of Islam march around the world, subjugating people, killing, slaughtering, smashing idols, uh, taking churches, taking temples, converting them to mosques, raping women. And then we have Islam in the UK and one, <laughs> one little woman shows up with 27 Qurans and they all lose their minds and they run, police, police, will you help us? Will you help rescue our powerful religion from this woman? She keeps, she's, she's got cartoons. We, we don't know what to do. She's got cartoons. And, and, and she put holes in the Quran to illustrate that there are holes in the narrative. Will, will, will you rescue us? It's like, my goodness. It's, it's the, it's the same, it's the same thing when, when, you know, hijab or one of these other guys are thumping their chest and they're insulting people's wives and they're threatening you're they're they're tossing around these veiled threats of rape and torture and as soon as you respond with anything it's uh, youtube will, will you ban him for me uh, patreon will will you deplatform that we we can't it's like they turn into these instant uh crybabies it's 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 guys do you have any is this the true? Is this the true religion? Is this the strong religion? The uh, uh, we'll get in your face and thump our chests until you say anything in response, and then we go. <laughs> Will anyone help us? Who's gonna help us? Oh my goodness, guys, this is this is so pathetic. Wow. I I think one of the sad thing is uh, actually I took the holes um, in the Quran late after police came to me. Um, one of the sad thing is Muslims are not happy the things I am saying at place called speakers going a heart of freedom of speech. It's not like I'm saying those things. I, I wouldn't have any problem saying those things in front of the mosques, which I've been doing for years. But they've got issues that I'm saying that at speakers going which is the heart of freedom of speech. What they do, they go, oh, I know police, once Islam comes and takes over, you will be the, like another group who is going to be get killed. But right now, we are in need of you. Would you please step in and then find ways that we strongly advise you to not go to Speaker's Corner. Therefore, advise her that she doesn't come to Speaker's Corner. Mm -hmm. 
So like they are not the police is not even like bothering to okay, let's identify those groups who are feeling their religion's feelings are being hurt and then discuss with them what's happening. If you can't control yourself, don't come to speakers corner. But what is happening is like police think, Oh yeah, it's okay, we can turn up in front of Christian house because oh Christians are nice people, they will obey the law. Muslims wouldn't listen to me anyway, so we go and kind of scare Christians and hopefully they will stop coming to speakers going to once they hear, oh yeah, my life might be under the danger. Oh well I went back. I went back because I don't have all the right to go to speakers corner and preach the gospel as well as critic the ideology ideology of Islam. And Muslims are Muslims have been doing that for a long time. They've been critiquing my ideology and that's absolutely welcome. Like I might be a woman or apparently they so-called like now there's this phrase she's short woman or five feet woman um doesn't matter about my gender or my height i still believe islam is false religion quran is false book muhammad is false prophet and there is nothing can force me to kind of just compromise that because you don't like me to breathe out and breathe in therefore do you simply just expect me to kind of compromise and then say oh yeah muhammad is the prophet or let me just not verbalize that that's just wrong um now uh i see in the chat uh modine says you working for the devil david is that the is modine that that dude who was like when when you would say anything about muhammad he would start attacking like your your mother and things is that the, uh, is that that guy <laughs> Yeah, that guy who even offered me money for the Mutamarich, yes. So yes, Mo, that, Mo, that. Mo Dean, devout Muslim, offering you mus, uh, money for Mutamarich and yeah. attacking him. Hey, hey, Mo Dean, got a little present for you. <laughs> got a little present. Look at that. I, lo I give, love that one. Give you a are little, very much. Give a little kiss, Mo Dean. Little. <laughs> um, it, it, that That is like sad, like. You could simply give me the Tabari explanation of the holes in the Quran or like other things or justify um, and try to answer my questions. But all you do is like, oh, yeah, this is not even being able to produce proper um, proper answer to the questions. Yeah. Um, and, and here here's what's here's what's disturbing. Right. Because, I, I mean, I don't know how things work in the UK. I, we always assume that things work the same way they, they work in the United States. Now, there are obviously failures in the United States, but as far as the actual position, as far as the actual position, and I know this because I was part of a trial about, about Dearborn when we were arrested, when we were arrested and we were just having a peaceful conversation with some Muslims at, a, at an Arab festival on, on a public street. And so... Um, we were uh, arrested and, and this went to trial and, and, and of course we sued them and so on and they settled they settled before uh, this ever went to trial but we had people on the stand who are experts in these kinds of issues one of one of them is uh, he's like a uh, he he trains he trains agents and police officers in how to respond in freedom of speech situations and so he was asked okay if you show up and there's a and there's a, a a riot forming because the KKK is speaking. What what is your primary what is your primary job there? And he said to protect the KKK. And this, that's that's it takes a lot to get your minds around, right? Because I mean the KKK are a bunch of like racist scumbags, and he's saying this is the United States. Um, I'm I'm training law enforcement. If we show up to an area. Our primary, our primary job is to protect. If there's an, if there's an angry mob forming against a speaker for constitutionally protected free speech, my mind is focused on protecting the speaker from violence uh, against them. And so, and that, that, that's talking. There, you're talking about like, you know, racist scum. And the the police are saying that's our jo our job is our job is to protect them from violence against them. And so, if uh. If you have a situation where someone is going to be offending someone else, 
this I, I, I mentioned this in a video I posted that this is called the heckler's veto in the United States. If if someone is speaking and that person speaking is going to offend someone else and police respond with saying, OK, well, you're going to upset all these people and they're going to do something. Therefore, I'm going to I'm going to stop you from speaking. I'm going to silence you. That's called the heckler's veto. You can't you can't do that. You can't silence a speak. The government can't silence a speaker because of some. Uh, you know, they think there might be some backlash against the person or something like that. But I'm looking over at, at you at Speaker's Corner. That's a, that's exactly what it looks like is is happening, right? It's, hey, Hatun, there are threats against you at Speaker's Corner. Therefore, you shouldn't go to Speaker's Corner. Oh, but okay, now you did go to Speaker's Corner and a bunch of people gather around and are yelling and throwing stuff. Therefore, um, therefore, we have to shut you down. We have to stop you from speaking. We have to remove you. And I saw a lot of people um, in the comments section saying, well, it's easier to remove one person than it is to, uh, you know, to remove the entire mob. Uh, as if those are the only two options, guys. It's very simple. If you're worried about if you're worried about someone doing violence to Hatun, then then put two officers standing there, right? Put two put some officers in there to stand there and make sure no one hurts. Them. That's what you do. But under no circumstances do you silence the speaker in something in, in something like that. As soon as you do, you just encourage the mob. You just basically send a message out saying, "Hey, if you want to shut down someone who's criticizing your religion, just form an angry mob and we'll we'll get involved." So very very despicable. Uh, very despicable behavior. What, what are your What are your thoughts on that? Because again, uh, uh, I'm not sure exactly what the law is over there, but in the United States, we would we would regard that as absolutely horrendous. Um. So there are a couple of things. Um, because of the uniqueness of speakers' corner, um, you would expect okay, it, uh, people don't in police doesn't want me to get um, hurt because they have to they have to protect me in one sense but in july end of july when um when i was simply for uh, drug on the floor because muslims were not happy with these holes in the um holes in the quran and akbar that day i was told oh, hey, oh, whoa, 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 whoa. i i really did not want to interrupt there but i wanted to say this so that you guys can remind me i wanted to say this because I've been thinking about all the different origami creations I'm going to make from the Quran, and a mouse would be perfect, and I could name the mouse Akbar. In fact, Hatun, if you want the if you want the mouse, I will send I will make <laughs> the mouse Akbar for the background of your videos. All right, continue. I just wanted to say that because I come up with awesome ideas and then I forget about them and I never remember them again. And so I wanted this here. So guys, remind me at some point to make Akbar the mouse. All right, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. So we will keep you accountable for mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. Um. So. Uh, in 26th of July, I was told um, I have to leave the corner. I got banned from the corner for the day, for the rest of the day, because, because, so I am the, on the, I am the one who is on the floor, okay? In that occasion also, uh, these followers of religion of peace, they are breaking the law at Speaker's Corner. They, they are not allowed to pray uh, in a group at speaker's corner, but they were intentionally praying and then police was turning blind eye to that. I was told um, I have to leave speaker's corner, um, otherwise I will get prosecuted. And reason I had to leave speaker's corner because I was affecting the comforts of others at speaker's corner. <laughs> so it just, 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 just repeat that. You were... They they said you have to leave because you're affecting the comfort of others. Yes. And then they said, if I don't leave, I will get prosecuted for that. And I am the one who was on the floor. I am the one who is like trying to protect her material versus Muslims are the one who is breaking the law, who are causing disturbance. But I am the one who is affecting their comfort. It's not like I am... Um, hurting feelings so, uh, so it's just like oh people who are coming to speakers corner their feelings are being hurt but I, we can't allow feelings of Muslims to be hurt so what we do is oh Hati you don't have any feelings anyway you, are, you got very thick skin you leave the corner for the day that's like what happened I left the corner and the person who tried to took my things got like praises by Muslims 
and he was. I I had to wait outside of the corner over an hour. He was still at the corner. But to protect the feelings of others, I had to be out of the speaker's corner. So that's on the 26th. From that, I'm not sure if the intention of the police was trying to protect me. Mm -hmm. I think in that okay, I I I don't I like comparing the British police versus Turkish police. British police is awesome, but when it comes to Islam and Muslims, there is something is not working right. There is lots of questions I have. And a couple of weeks ago, when my book is being stolen, like my three brothers are being punched and then to just like move on from that oh, okay it's another sunday and then the sunday which i was um the which these muslim gangs just like stepped in i was told if i don't leave while i was still at the corner i expressed the police like oh you need to control those muslims i don't feel safe for my brothers i'm not gonna move I was expressed if I am not if I'm not going to move, they are going to arrest me. And while people are like kicking my feet, police like drags me out because otherwise they are going to arrest me. It's not like, oh, we feel right now we feel afraid of your life. But if you don't leave, you will get arrested. And then after uh, end of the day, end of the evening, Again, if you go back to speaker's corner, I will get arrested because I'm causing disturb disturbing at speaker's corner. And I am even looking to be banned from speaker's corner. But I'm just thinking, okay, hmm, there is a problem. There is a problem because, and last Sunday, the Sunday which passed, we find out actually police didn't even spoke any of those gangs who were simply calling rape of Hatun, killing of Hatun, or co like dis disturbing the speaker's corner. Police haven't even been spoken to them. But by that time, I had um, email which police was asking, are you going to follow our advice and not go to speaker's corner? Are you going to continue with your actions? And I am being told I will arrest it if I return to speaker's corner. I will. I might even get banned because Muslims are not happy what I am saying get speaker's corner. Yet, none of the Muslims were even being questioned or even being warned because they were the one who is causing the issue. Yet, in the mind of police, police is defend police is defending me. Just that just doesn't make sense to me. Yeah, it's uh, it, as you're talking, um, it reminds me of a lot of things when when you say that uh, that uh, a couple weeks ago they had to remove you from the park and said that it's because uh, what what did you say it was R ruining the Eff affecting the comforts Eff of others affecting the comfort. Now, notice, ladies and gentlemen, you could apply that to to anyone, but who would it be applied to, right? I mean, you could say, hey, this guy over here is calling for uh, calling for Islam. You've got Ali Dawa, and he's saying, he's saying that, man, when we take over, we're going to execute all you ex-Muslims and stuff like that. that. That's the sort of thing that would be affecting a lot of people's comfort, especially when people like Ali Dawa are saying, hey, if, if my daughter is nine years old and she gets her, she gets her period, I'm going to tell her you're ready for marriage. Say, hey, this is affecting a lot of people. That, that That's... That should make people a little uncomfortable, those kinds of things. And so any of this, you can say that, but who do they go after? They go after they go after Hatun over this and say, ah, you're affecting other people's comfort and therefore you have to go. And the reason I say that, that brings some things to memory, is when Nabil and I got arrested in Dearborn. Nabil was standing there. I had my mouth closed. I was sitting there with a camera so that no one could accuse us of doing something that we didn't. Nabil's sitting there answering questions of these young Muslims who are asking him, hey, how, how can you believe in the Bible? How can you believe that, that Jesus is God? They're asking these questions. He's he's answering the questions. He's praising them and so on. Uh, police came in, arrested us, not the, not the Muslims who gathered around us. They arrested us and charged us with breach of peace. We had breached the peace of the area, right? Now notice, we're having a conversation. You, if you want to do that, you could do that with anything, right? You could you could say, hey, two people are having a conversation. I want to arrest one of them. 
I'm going to go up and say, hey, you're ruining the peace of this area. You could say that about anything. And so here's what you have, and, and this is what you have to watch out for, ladies and gentlemen. You can't, in the UK, hopefully, uh, say um, you were... You are, you are, you know, drawing a cartoon of Muhammad or showing a cartoon of Muhammad and showing cartoons of Muhammad is illegal. So you have to say something else. And so what we're going to say is, oh, you're, you know, you're, uh, you're making people uncomfortable and that's some rule or something like that, right? Um, you can't say in Dearborn, Michigan, uh, hey, you're evangelizing Muslims and some locals do not like that you're talking to their, uh, you know, to you're talking to a bunch of 15 year olds who came up to you and asked you questions. They don't like you answering their questions. They're worried about their kids converting. And so, uh, we're going to lock you. We're going to lock you up for that. You can't say that. So what do you say? You say breach of peace. Breach of peace. It's the same thing we find online, right? YouTube doesn't want to say you can't criticize Muhammad or you can't make fun of Muhammad. So what they'll do is they'll say, "Hey, we have a rule against hate speech. You can't have hate speech on Twitter and Facebook and, and YouTube and so on. You can't have hate speech. Do you agree? You shouldn't have hate speech." Oh, okay, well, well, now we're going to ban your video because it's hate speech, even though all you did was criticize criticize Islam or something like that. Um, so, so they're all they're all doing the same thing. They're protecting Islam from criticism by silencing people who are criticizing it, but they have to come up with reasons to justify what they're doing and reasons to justify giving Islam this special status. Uh, but they can't say what they're actually doing. And the, the reason this is disturbing is just think about this. Islamic law says Islam is supreme. Islam is, is on a higher plane. Muslims are on a higher plane than everyone else. Everyone else is inferior. Islam is the truth. Everything else is inferior. So there are different, different rules here. There are different rules. Um, you all have to follow the rules of Islam. Islam has a place of authority over you. And then we come to the West when we're supposed to say no no you're not superior and no we're not going to we're not going to act like you're superior that's what we should be saying instead we say nope we're going to act like your religion is superior we're going to act like you're superior we're going to act like you have authority over all of us um uh, but we're just going to come up with different justifications for it and so it's just amazing that people fall for this over and over and over again and so you got a situation where speaker's corner the hub of global freedom of speech and a woman <laughs> a woman can't criticize Islam because the crowd there has learned that police will side with them. This is amazing stuff. Yeah, if you think about it, like since since the police uh, told me to leave because I was affecting the feelings of others, every week, like Muslims were out of the control and every week would something happen until last week police simply tells me, oh, well, if you if you don't leave now, we will arrest you. And the thing is, like, I wouldn't mind being arrested. Uh, like, I have, if I if I break the law, then yeah, I should be I, I should be responsible for my actions. But if you think practically, if they put me in prison, I, like I've got to return back. I've got dogs. Like someone needs to look out. They can't stay that like whole whole the time by themselves. Stuff you kind of. Okay, I can't. You you have to think very quickly. Okay, I can't afford anything right now because I have to go back home. Otherwise, there is no water. There is no food for my dogs. And then you just okay. Uh, let let me let, let me follow your advice, and if so that I don't get arrested. But because Muslims know those are working. Oh, the moment we cry to the police, the mo the moment uh, we step in. Police can't do anything to us because we are bigger crowd and we are under the religion of peace. Therefore, they will they will remove her, and that's been happening like just week after week, week after week, and week after week, and it is happening as you said at speakers' corner, where people like it. It is the history is people who were um, getting death penalty. They would stand there and then they would do their last speech. And then since then, it is a place where you can go and say every, anything you want to say. You can even go and abuse Queen. Uh, ideally, you want to kind of back up what you are saying because now everything is on the camera. You don't want to be on the camera that you are lying. Therefore, uh, sourcing everything is all right. But just it, it becomes 
strange when you know like I'm not dimmy for me bottom line is like I'm not dimmy and I'm not going to be dimmy for Muslims they, they need to pull themselves together and they need to answer basic questions and that, uh, being able to deal with those questions speakers corner is the place freedom of speech freedom of to believe change your religion is the core core freedoms in England people have it but very soon because the comforts of others are being affected or because people can't answer the questions therefore they want to kill you that making you to cause disturbing is gonna take that away uh, so England will be known as like as you made a video on Sharia corner or uh, Repub uh, Islamic Republic of United Kingdom or something it'll be called not so great Britain yeah, <laughs> not yeah that, so great can Britain. Be another, that can be another way yeah and uh, I mean you ha so like I, oh good I did I did take um, Charlie Hebdo's pictures mm -hmm. I'm very actually I'm surprised that yeah, people were upset about it I'm surprised that people were upset about it. The reason is speakers con is place for such a thing. That's mm -hmm. the first thing. Second thing is in France, when um, uh, people who did, Charlie Hebdo, Hebdo people were kind of killed, even the Prime Minister of England, David Cameron, in that time, went to Paris and then said, "We are all Charlies." So he stood up for the freedom of speech and then he said, oh, that was wrong. That was wrong. But that was 2014, 2015. Nothing changed. Like since then, now it's just becoming more Sharia corner. You can't even bring up the pictures. And like I did show off some of the Jesus's pictures. I'm not asking anyone to go and kill because they draw the picture of Jesus, but because someone is holding the pictures of Muhammad, not uh, let alone drawing, people are calling your rape, your kill, and all other kind of things. Not very peaceful at all. Yeah, this is, I mean, think about this, ladies and gentlemen. No one has to go to Speaker's Corner, right? <laughs> These, if, if someone has really thin skin and doesn't want to be offended and doesn't want to doesn't want to doesn't want to have his feelings hurt he doesn't have to go to a go to a place where people are supposedly free to say whatever they want you don't have to go you don't have to you don't have to be there you don't have to be there on sunday you choose to go to speaker's corner yeah. on sunday so you go to a place where you know people are allowed to say what they want to say and then when and then when someone says something that's critical of your religion, a religion that calls for that person's violent subjugation, a religion that calls non-Muslims the worst of creatures, Surah 98, verse 6, a religion that's a book that says you can have sex with prepubescent girls, a book that says you can beat your wife into submission. Um, when you go there, if anyone criticizes your book, um, you, you throw a big tantrum, uh, form a mob, and now police will uh, silence the speaker to protect your feelings. Um, it, it's, it's interesting what you said, Hatun, that, wait a minute, you, you, you're Muslim, you're here, I have questions. You should, you, should be answering, you should be answering these questions. Think about that, ladies and gentlemen. It's, hey, you have an ideology, you're telling us that your ideology is true. You're telling us that you have a true prophet. You're telling us that your book is the word of God. Great. We have some questions for you. We have some objections for you. We have some criticisms we'd like you to answer. And the response is, silence her. Get her removed. Get her removed from this area. Allahu Akbar, she's been removed. Ha ha, we win. We, we silenced her. What? I, it's not only that, actually. After all those like celebrations that I was... Um... Uh, taken out of speaker's corner. I think people are kind of just thinking, oh yeah, she was the troublemaker. Like they sometimes think I'm Mohammed Hijab or um, Sheikh Yasser Kadri, but anyway. Uh, so videos after videos goes up on YouTube that people are saying, oh, she was burning the Quran. I saw that too. Yeah, and then, and then I've got this email which says, uh, we are gonna kind of slit your throat stuff. 
And then uh, uh, another one kind of says, are you uh, seriously planning to go back to Speaker's Corner even though we advise you to not do so? Why? Because people j just look at those videos and then say, oh, she was burning the Quran. I wouldn't, like, theologically, I wouldn't have any problem to do so because Uthman did it. Uh, Muslims did it in history. Mm -hmm. Why they would have a problem for me to do it? Like, theologically, I wouldn't have any problem. But just like one person lies and then everyone follows that. Mm -hmm. Therefore, it, they just make you kind of, okay, with this, she will freak out for her loved ones because now they know, okay, they are not going to get to me. So what we do is we put her loved ones in danger. Mm -hmm. That's like another way to get on with things. And it's just sad. Yeah, uh, same thing. Uh, same thing when we got arrested in Dearborn. Then the rumor spread that we were going around screaming at people, telling them they're all going to burn in hell. And we were causing a riot and screaming. And in order to, for, in order to, to stop a riot forming that could could uh, interfere with people's public safety, um, that the police had to arrest them. So it was all it was all nonsense. It was all it was all total lies. Um, again, I was I was quiet, and Nabil was calmly answering questions. Um, so, yeah, there is this. <laughs> Notice it's we want to get these people arrested. We want to get these people kicked out. We want to get these people silenced. But if we say what they were actually doing, it's kind of hard to sell to, to lots of people. So we have to we have to lie about what they were doing. We have to lie about what they were doing in order to uh, in order to sell the case that this person had to be silenced. Man, what a religion. What a religion that does this so many different ways around the world. Well, um, one uh, one related issue is again going back to you saying wait a minute you muslims i have some questions for you 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 should be answering you should be answering these questions um so there's that and then there's the 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 additional issue of guess what people criticize christianity all the time people criticize atheism all the time we all deal with this um why would islam get these special privileges it seems like people like you people like me we say Muslims, um, you you need to you need to learn to obey the rules that everyone else is obeying here. Now, lot tons of Muslims do. Lots of Muslims, lots of Muslims do. But there are lots of Muslims who don't. There's, it's still ingrained in their minds. Hey, we have this special privilege status, and our religion has this special privilege status, and you all need to treat us like we are in authority here. And so we're coming along and we're saying, um, actually, no. We're going to make sure that you are treated like all the rest of us are treated. Namely, your religion gets criticized just as our religion gets criticized. You have We get to ask you questions, raise criticisms, just as you get to ask us questions and raise criticisms against us. Um, we're, 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 all, we're going to make sure we're all on the same plane here. So you have, you have that. And so we're basically treating Muslims like fellow human beings with equal rights and equal status. And then you've got the British government who, I mean, on the, on the one hand, here, here's what's said. That, that people have pointed this out. This, this is called the soft bigotry of low expectations. Before, I said, you know, it looks like the British government is, is giving Islam what it wants. It's giving Islam this privileged status. But it's not doing it because it, be, it believes that Islam has this privileged status. It's really, as you pointed out, hey, the Christians are easier to deal with. So we'll deal. We'll deal with the Christians. We're not going to deal. We're not going to deal with those other guys because they'll get violent and so on. So it's they have lower expectations for Muslims. They 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 believe they can they can reason with you and appeal to you and not do that with with the Dawa teams. And so it's actually here's the here's the amazing situation. People call us haters and bigots and Islamophobes because we treat Muslims like like equal citizens and the various governments and the media and politicians and educators and entertainers who 
act like they're defending Islam, but really they're treating Muslims like your your children, you're not ready. Your barbarians, you're not ready to, to be on the same plane as us. Therefore, we're going to protect you. The way we would protect an animal who is being abused, we'll protect you like that. We know you're incapable of adhering to the same rules that everyone else adheres to. We know that you can't follow those rules. That's what they're doing, right? They're saying, we don't expect this mob to adhere to the same rules as everyone else. Therefore, we're not even going to tell the mob that they have to follow the rules. We're going to, we're just going to do what they want and and hopefully, you know, hopefully things will change it at some point. And so we're the how are we the haters when we when we we have a certain level of respect for all people and we're treating people the same and the government and the politicians and so on and the journalists treat Muslims like they're inferior and incapable of operating by the same rules that everyone else is, is adhering to. And they're the good guys. They're the good guys, the ones who treat Muslims like they're subhuman. Very strange. Other thing is like, my main focus is Islam, not the individuals. Mm -hmm. But in somehow, they just can't take it. Mm -hmm. I don't know why. It's like, just, they're so sensitive. So sensitive. Yeah, and you would you you would think that the message would be, "Hey guys, stop being so sensitive," right? <laughs> Instead, it's, "Oh, we know you guys are sensitive, and we can't expect you to change, so we'll silence anyone who's hurting your feelings." My goodness. <laughs> Next time, like I'm gonna go with like pro the red roses, and I'll say, "Okay, <laughs> this is for the feelings of <laughs> Muhammad and the Quran. We've got to fix it." Just. I don't know. I'm just, I'm just finding it strange while Muslims, as you said, like they can mock my God. They do mock my God. They make fun of him. They blaspheme. I'm just like, OK, let, let me answer your questions. Why did you say such a thing? Let's engage. Like a couple of months ago before lockdown, we were asking question on, OK, regarding the missing verses of adult press suckling and like what is the wisdom of Allah behind it? Muslims were simply making fun of Jesus that he had to suckle. So, uh, like in that one, I'm just like, you know, I'm finding that like, you're just making fun of my God. But let me explain why God man needed to do that or why God man did that versus the moment when I ask, oh, how would you feel if someone comes and then sucks the breast of your wife? Suddenly, like you are hate preacher, you are hate preacher, you are hate preacher. It's the same, just the same thing. Yeah, and guys, n notice notice what what Hatun just pointed out, right? Right, because what what she just brought up that that seems like a question that we should be asking, right? So, in case you don't know what what we're talking about here, um, historically there was a situation in Islam where. Um, Basically, you have men who aren't always uh, going to be around at home, but they have other men who work in their household. If you have a you know slave or something like that, and so the situation arose: Hey, you know, I have to go away on business. My wife's at home with this dude. How do I know she's going to be faithful to me? She's not going to cheat on me. She's not going to commit adultery. How do I know that, Muhammad? So this issue gets brought to Muhammad, and Muhammad. Awesome prophet that he is. He has that connection. He has that connection with Allah through the angel Gabriel. And so he says, yo, angel Gabriel, could you go ask Allah, hey, what do I do about these, these uh, women who are going to be around men while their husbands are away? How can, how can they, how can the husbands know that the, the chastity is preserved? How do they know? How do we know, man? And the great God Allah said, Gabriel, send this to Muhammad. I've got the solution. And so Allah sends the message down via the angel Gabriel. This was in the Quran. This was in the Quran. Here's what you do. Just have your wife breastfeed the dude 10 times. <laughs> this the goat? Could you back that up yeah. a little bit? Could you back that up a little, a little close? Okay. Oh, that's the goat eating the, eating the verses. Yeah. So this is... Uh, so, ladies and gentlemen, follow, follow the follow Allah's reasoning here. Allah says, Allah says, if you don't want your wife being unfaithful to you with some other guy, just have her pull her breasts out, put them in this dude's mouth ten times. Then it's gonna be like he's her her son, and and there won't be any sexual attraction between them. This was in the Quran. This was Allah's solution, right? And what Hatun just put, get, 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 tell us what tell us what that's about, Hatun. Uh, so, 
of course, Allah, remember, Allah has been merciful. And then Allah brought that down to five times. It was ten times. Yep. So I did show you the picture of Yasir Kadi in the streets of London. So this is the picture of the God in the streets of London. So someone draw the God. And then in here, you've got the ten adult breast suckling verses. Mm -hmm. God is enjoying. And as you can see, God deserves a like, very beautiful place. Yep. Um matter of fact that will uh that goat <laughs> that goat will be made out of the quran here pretty soon and think about this ladies <laughs> and gentlemen i'm gonna make a i'm gonna make a paper goat out of the quran now if that paper goat eats a piece of the quran is that cannibalism <laughs> if a goat made out of the quran eats a piece of the quran this is going to be interesting stuff that it's that's a lot of artwork to do here in the in the near future, but but uh, so so anyway, notice stepping back a little. So you've got this command: have your wife breastfeed this man <laughs> ten times, and then later, does it really need to be ten times? I mean, couldn't he kind of be her son <laughs> after like five Compro times? Let's compromise. Let's yeah. compromise. Make it five times. <laughs> so Allah Allah's a reasonable God, so He says, sure, just have your wife pull out her breasts, stick her breasts in this man's mouth five times, and then he'll still be like her son, and then there won't be any sexual attraction. And when you go away on business, you can know that your wife is perfectly safe with this man sucking on her breasts while you're out of town, and that they won't do anything uh, unacceptable. So this seems like a perfect example of where you would want to ask Muslims, hey, uh, could you explain this? How, why I should trust your God that the same God who says you need to pray five times a day, you need to do this, you need to do that. The same God who's delivering Islam and says believe in Muhammad is also saying, hey, my solution to marital infidelity is to have women go around breastfeeding dudes all the time. Could you, could you explain that? Yeah. And, 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 and the response is, how dare you question our religion? You bigot, you Islamophobe, racist, racist. Did you, did you hear that guy in the video who was going, oh, racist? Yeah. Yes, you kind of think like, since when Islam is a race? But, uh, yeah, some, some of the um, followers of Islam is as good um, educated as their prophet, but can't do much about it. Um, had a question here. Well, it's, it's actually for me, but it involves you. So Bento Fernandez says, Brother David, if you ever get back to make the Boom Boom Room videos, could you make one where Sister Hatun meets the supposed Prophet Muhammad? Uh, Hatun, would you, like, would you like to meet Muhammad and have a discussion with Muhammad? You can ask him anything you want. Unlike the Muslim, unlike the Muslim Dawah teams at Speaker's Corner, Muhammad, the Prophet Muhammad will not run from you in the Boom Boom Room. He will answer your questions, then he will blow you up. Um, I, I guess the question is, um, all Muslims are doing today is, they're trying to use the Muhammad's answer is like, uh, regarding what, what, what people are asking. So, uh, if Muhammad is capable to get new revelations and then answer my questions, because so far the questions I have, from Islamic sources are not being answered, so therefore should be okay. But I guess Muhammad needs to be little, have a little bit more education by that time, mm -hmm. because people are running away from those basic questions. Yeah, they are. Um, but yeah, if you ever want to, uh, if you ever want to meet the Prophet Muhammad himself, sure, I, I will get your, but, I, I will get your plane ticket and I will pay for it with my uh, with my Quranagami money. With all the money I get from doing my epic works of art. I guess we don't have to do practice like certain things to meet with Muslims in that time. Like I don't want to go through, oh, no, Muhammad has to do breast suckling, those kind of things. That would just be bad. Yeah. Um, oh. um, can, can you can you see this one? Uh, yeah, pull it back. Pull it back some because uh, you're, you're kind of cropped here. But uh, Sorry, I can't see myself. Oh, so, so that's the Muhammad suckling miracle? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Yeah, so this is the Charlie Hebdo Hatun edition. Mo Muslims got very much upset with the lips of Muhammad in this one. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, so this is another... This is not real Charlie Hebdo. This is one of... one of um, The one I put together, but like that kind of caused another sensitive, sensitive, 
um, Muslims got sensible again. Um, yeah, and guys, I mean, I mean, keep in mind. So, so that's a, that's another example of a, uh, you know, sucking on tongues and things like that. And you want to say, hey, you know, I have some questions about this, and you ask the questions, and you're a bigot, you're a racist, you're an Islamophobe. This is this is an. I mean, but but think about the process here, right? So you've got Islam. And the Muslims come to us and they say, ah, oh, this is just the religion of, of pure monotheism. And then you op actually open up the sources and you've, you know, you've got all this stuff about sucking on tongues and Muhammad walking around covered in semen and sex with prepubescent girls and breastfeeding adult men and all this weird, wild stuff. And you say, guys, we have some questions about this. And the response is, how dare you question our religion? Police, police, arrest them, arrest them for questioning our religion. This is a deeply insecure religion. Deeply I insecure. Think, like for me, um, the bottom line is this. I, as a Christian, I believe Muhammad is false prophet. Mm -hmm. And I am entitled to believe that in England. Okay, maybe in different part of the world, I cannot even verbalize that. But in England, I am entitled to believe that. And in England, uh, I am entitled to evangelize Muslims by using those lines by critiquing Islam. And that's absolutely fine. And I, I do expect the same thing from Muslims, critiquing, uh, critiquing Lord Jesus Christ, critiquing my scripture. That's absolutely fine. But what we have is freedom of speech and freedom of belief, which is the like core, core, core things for England is now on the stake. Why? Because as I discuss, uh, as I express like Mohammed is fo false protein, even if I want to discuss just the life lifestyle of Mohammed, his wives, um, his actions, if I want to discuss the Quran, holes in the Quran, all those kind of things, which my faith forces me to do so because I'm Christian and I believe Muhammad is one of the worst examples to humanity. Uh, now, it's not only I believe Muslim scholars tells us Quran cannot be trusted. There are holes in the narrative. But the moment when I put this together, Muslims, which tells us Islam is like a false religion, but Muslims get very sensitive and discussion gets heated and that's very normal. Heated discussions are very normal, but being sensitive and therefore you get sensitive and then you want to, you think it's all right to hurt others or put the life of others in danger because you are so sensitive. It's just not, it's just not working. And uh, one of the things is like, um, I did receive emails after emails um, where Christians express their concern that as a Christian, I am burning the Quran or as a Christian, I'm saying Muhammad is false prophet, be knowing that Muslims are going to get hurt. Some of the emails were concerning in a sense like, please don't go back to the speaker's corner. Please don't go back to the speaker's corner. Because, oh, uh, something might happen. Speaker's corner might shut down all those like victim playing ga games, cards. Mm -hmm. But if... If we start saying, okay, you cannot say Muhammad is false prophet, you cannot hold a book which has a holes in it, and that book is identified as Quran. You cannot hold art which is drawing of the Muhammad. Then all we are doing is we are silencing the freedom of speech. It's not about Christians versus Muslims. It's about world and freedom of speech, freedom of belief versus ideology of Islam. And we should not be silencing that. And the violence, violence needs to stop. If you cannot handle, like I, I learned the other day a new phrase, if you can't take the hit, leave the kitchen, apparently. That's what people say. So if you can't handle the critic, if you can't deal with the objections, don't come to Speaker's Corner. Speaker's Corner is not a place where people offer hot chocolate and flowers to one another. People are there to have debates, discussions, heated arguments, and that's absolutely fine. Jay Smith was like beaten a couple of times because 
because what he was doing at speaker's corner. So it like it, it does happen occasionally. It shouldn't happen. But if you can't handle, don't come to speaker's corner. If your feelings if your feelings are so sensitive, if you can't even defend your profit, just stay at home. Just stay at home. Don't oppose don't treat speakers con as the Sharia con or don't treat England as Sharia country. It's, it, I, I, I'm just like, I just believe it's wrong. And if you are, if you are not practicing your freedom of speech, it is all about silencing the debate. And that is wrong because you will engage with people. You will have debates and discussions in the intention that people will find the truth open debate uh, open discussions free debates free discussion is the only way people can find out what is the truth and truth always wins but now that is under the stake why it is under the stake because a christian woman apparently holding the picture of muhammad christian woman is holding a picture of holes in the quran with akbar or um, holes in the quran therefore Freedom of speech is under the stake because religion of peace followers are not able to practice peace anymore. It just I'm just finding it um, upsetting. Yeah. But no one cares about my feelings, so I can't be upset. <laughs> yeah, the only <laughs> the only feelings that matter are the Dawa team's feelings, <laughs> not Hatuns, not Hatuns. <laughs> um, so, <laughs> yeah, this is this is. Ladies and gentlemen, this is this is just wild wild stuff. You would expect you would expect that when uh, you have Muslims in the UK who don't believe that you should be able to criticize their religion, it's right here. It's right here in our sources. You can't criticize this stuff. Muhammad ordered his followers to kill people who criticize this stuff. So that's the way it is. The response should be, yeah, good thing we're not under that law. Good thing your prophet does not control things here. Instead, it's okay. Who do you want us to lock up? Who do you want us to kick out? Um, and so, yeah, this is a this is a bad, bad situation where it looks like it looks like in the near future you could just be showing someone at Speaker's Corner that there are holes in the narrative, showing him a whole a, a holy Quran. You could be showing him a Charlie Hebdo cartoon that people were killed over. You could show it to them, and they might, here in the very near future, say, Hatun, you are permanently banned from the what should be the, the, the free speech hub of the entire world, but you cannot, you cannot say these things here at Speaker's Corner ever again. We will kick you out. Does, does that look like something that, that might happen here in the very near future? Um, so I, was, I was told uh, I will get arrested or um, there is a thing like I will be banned. Apparently, a couple of people left on my YouTube live stream that um, they are running a petition for me to get banned from Speaker's Corner. So being banned from Speaker's Corner means you can't go there. It's not like you go there and you can't say certain things. You can't go there. Mm -hmm. um, so that's that might happen. That might happen. But if that happens, that will be very much shame. Yeah. Because feelings of other people are meta, but my feelings are not meta. No one cares about my feelings. No one cares about, like, I'm challenging Islam or those kind of things. Feelings of others are meta. And it's, uh, like, I think if I get banned or if there's like all the petitions are going around or all the uh, fake news are going around, all the videos are being put up, I wouldn't be surprised if I get banned. Mm -hmm. But it will be very much, very much, very much, uh, UK would be saying yes in this occasion, even though uh, it was 100 Muslim who were shouting to kill her, rape her, all those kind of things. We wanted to come alongside of the Muslims. That would be simply that what it would say. No, that that would be the end because that that wouldn't stop with you. That would simply send a very very clear message. 
No. Um, hey, okay, you guys got rid of Hatoon. We got rid of Hatoon for you. Now who's next? Oh, you don't like Bob the Builder? We'll just form a big crowd at, around him and start screaming and throwing things and saying how he's 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 uh, he's causing you guys to to get violent like this. And we'll get rid of him too. And eventually we'll just get rid of anyone who criticizes Islam, anyone who questions the Quran, and all that we'll have is, is you guys down here preaching your religion. And and that notice that's the goal, right? That that's that's what these Dawa teams want. Hey, we get to we get to we get to give you our religion and you all keep your mouth shut about this. Even though our religion calls you the worst of creatures, even though our religion calls for your violent subjugation, even though our religion says uh, what we can do to uh, to the men when we capture them and to their wives. Different things are going to be done, and to their children, they'll be enslaved, even though our religion says all these things about you, even though our religion started it. People always ask me, David, why do you talk about Islam? Hey, Islam started it. Allah and Muhammad talked about me long before I ever heard of Allah and Muhammad. They were saying what you could do to me, right? Yeah. So I'm simply responding. And Muslims say, how dare you respond to this claim that you will be violently subjugated? How dare you? And it's just, well, it's, it's absolutely amazing. But yes, if that message gets sent, hey, we, the police of, of Great Britain, will silence you, even in, even in Speaker's Corner. That's, uh, yep, that would, that would be the clearest, clearest message that they could possibly send. Now, um, on this, oh, good. We did have, a um, couple of years ago, there was a young gentleman called Tan. Uh, Muslims were doing the same thing to him. Uh, and then he left country, uh, he, he, um, and then kind of things happened, he didn't come back. And then also there was like another young man um, called Sara. he was talking about colorism in Islam quite a lot. And apparently he had like, uh, police went to his house and then said, your life is under the danger, all those kind of things. And then with that intimidation, he had to stop speaker's corner. And I know people uh, who are part of my team uh, because Muslims just couldn't control themselves with the harassment, with harassment. People felt, yeah, it is much better if I leave Speaker's Corner, if I don't come to Speaker's Corner. Mm -hmm. So their, their way is working. Like if, pol if police can't step in and then stop individuals to come to Speaker's Corner, what we will do is we will take them on, we will take them on until they fed up and then they will stop coming. Mm -hmm. Because end of the day, there is a moment sometimes you just say, okay, it's just too much. I can't handle it anymore. I think they're kind of waiting for that moment. Mm -hmm. But I don't think that will work with me. But anyway, No, it won't. And th that's, that's kind of the problem with that approach. Because notice, it, it's the same approach uh, that, uh, well, Muhammad Hijab and Ijaz Ahmed and, and all of these guys, when, when, it, when Ijaz is you know, calling people, using racial slurs um, against people and doxing them. When Muhammad Hijab is talking about people's wives, insulting people's wives, it's just kind of another level of, of harassment, which is along the same lines as, you know, people sending you death threats, saying we'll kill you and stuff like that. It's in an Islamic country, we would just chop your head off. But we understand we're in the West and we can't do it. But we'll try to get the same result. We'll try to silence yeah. you, but we'll do it in other ways. We'll threaten you, we'll harass you, we'll harass your family, we'll heap abuse on you, hoping that that works. And here's so here's the problem. Yes, that will work with a lot of people, right? In other words, if you just if you just heap charges of racism on someone for doing something, you will control a lot of people like that. A lot of people say, "Whoa, hey, yeah, I did want to question your religion. Yeah, I did want to do evangelism to Muslims, but I didn't know I was going to be called Islamophobe and racist and bigot. So I'll go do something else." There are a lot of people that that will work with, especially if if that doesn't work. If if just insulting them doesn't work. Then you know, hey, we're gonna we're gonna kill you. We're gonna kill you. Whoa! A lot of people will walk away from that. And even if people don't walk away from that, oh, now you're going after my family. Oh, now you're doxing me. Okay, yeah, I'm 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 done with this. Here's the thing, though. Eventually, everyone who can be controlled in that way is gone, and all that's left are people who can't be controlled in that way. Right? So that's people like Hatun, the apostate prophet, me, people that we're not going to stop there, there's what are you what are you going to threaten threaten us with even if you you know you'd have to kill us to stop us right so we're all that's left and then 
once that happens, they don't know what else to do. They don't know what else to do because they have one. They have one. They have one method. It's just keep heaping abuse on people until they do what you want, and that method's not working. And then, so what are we going to do now? What are we going to do now? Oh, we need the police to step in and ban Hatoon because that's the, that's the only way. We need YouTube and Twitter and Facebook and Patreon to ban all of these people so that they so that they can't speak anymore. In other words, they realize, hey, the, the standard methods don't work. The standard methods don't work. Therefore, we need to silence them in all these other ways, but under no circumstances can they be heard. And it just never occurs to them, hey, maybe, maybe if we want to deal with them, we should just answer what they're saying and respond to them and just be on the level of dialogue. And if they if they criticize or they mock, we get to criticize and mock and return. That's that's the idea here. We're all on the same playing field. They can't get their minds around that. And so, yep, got to silence us in in all kinds of uh, all kinds of other ways. Oh, well, I don't want to be the bad news breaker here, but um, I'm not willing to be dimmy. Yeah. And I am, I am every day. I am very much convinced that solution to a problem of muslims is lord jesus christ mm -hmm. and i'm not gonna hide away from that and i'm not ashamed of verbalizing or i'm not afraid of verbalizing that allah is false god muhammad is false prophet quran is false book and there are holes in your quran there are holes in your narrative i'm not ashamed or afraid of that and i'm so far i'm not feeling any sense that I should be dimmy to Muslims, and I will, I will go until the end, whenever that end is. Yeah, and uh, this brings us to probably the last thing we should discuss. Um, you've showed us a number of cartoons and the holes in the Quran. I've shown, I've shown some, some phenomenal artwork here. That's just the head; it connects to the body over there. Um, we have some confusion here. So you, you have a lot of issues. You have uh, people have drawn Muhammad cartoons. Uh, we talked a little bit about uh, people who would, you know, burn the Quran, things like that. Generally, generally, I regard, in, in most cases, I regard that as like kind of silly stuff, right? Like it, it would never occur to me, hey, I disagree with this, therefore I'm going to burn it. It's never crossed my mind, hey, I disagree with this philosopher's book, therefore I'm going to make some origami out of it. Um, it doesn't it occur to me, hey, you know, there are some holes in this person's logic in this book, therefore I'm going to drill holes into this thing and run around with this book all full of holes. Normally, normally, Normally that stuff seems kind of, kind of silly and childish but suddenly we get to Islam and we've got these we've got people saying we're going to kill you over this we're going to silence you we do not allow you to criticize our religion the way you you know people criticize other positions other ideologies other religions uh and we will go on a mass murdering spree if you do that if if you do any of that to us and uh, not only that, but even even if we're not killing, we'll uh, we'll we'll go after people's wives, we'll dox people, we'll uh, we'll we'll use racial slurs against people, we'll do all of these things, but respect our religion in return, guys. If there's ever a time, <laughs> if there's ever a time where you want to where you want to send a message and say, um, look, you know, I would I would normally regard it as silly to start making uh, you know origami things out of out of your book. But given, given the way certain people are, are acting and the level of violence that is coming out of, that is being produced by the book that went into this pig head. This pig head is made of a book that has caused a lot of death. Millions and millions and millions of deaths in this world. And what amazes me is the Dawah groups, the Dawah groups, get more upset over this, over me folding up this book, than they do about this book inspiring people to commit millions of murders. And so there comes a time when we say, guys, we have to get this point across to you. One, one that we are allowed to do this in the United States and Great Britain. We are allowed to do this 
We're allowed to do this at Speaker's Corner. We're allowed to do this and show it online. We're allowed to do this. If you don't like it, don't go to Speaker's Corner. If you don't like it, don't watch my YouTube videos. That, but deal with it. Deal with it. Stop killing. Stop murdering. Stop, pe stop trying to, to shut people down over something like that. So, uh, so that's one. And on the other hand, get your minds around the fact that when your religion, when your book calls for our violent subjugation, when your book calls us the worst of creatures, you can't blame us if we respond by making fun of your book. You just, I mean, I mean, you can, you can complain, you can complain all you want, but you just can't be reasonable in your complaints. When this book calls me and Hatun the worst of creatures, calls for our violent subjugation, and we say, ha ha, we're going to make fun of you in response, and you, oh, I can't believe you do that, it's the end of the world. You're calling for our deaths. You're calling for us to be killed and you're flipping out that we make fun of it in response? Grow up, guys. Grow up. Quit being a bunch of babies about this stuff. My goodness. What are your thoughts, Hattoon? So what, what, are your, what are your thoughts on, on this issue that, um, that we're in this situation where I'm making, I'm making fun of things in ways that I, you know, I chewed up and spit out the Quran. I, I, never done anything like that before i don't i don't do that it's like we're getting to a position where guys i really want you to understand that you can't stop us you can't stop us from doing these things and you still for some reason you think you can and you can't so how do i make it clear to you guys that your book says a lot of nasty things and i don't have to respect it if i don't want to the only reason i would is because i want to get along with people and if the people that I would like to get along with are turning out, you know, apologists and debaters and so on are turning out to be doxing people, insulting wise, well, great, then I'm not trying to get along with you anymore. And I'm just going to chew up your book and spit it out and show you what I really think of it. So those are my thoughts. What are your thoughts on this? Hotel? So um, sh shame is like, I'm not as clever as you are. I, I, I couldn't come up with those um, animal pictures, all those kind of things. I'm like very, very simple. Um, I think for me that are I, I, I don't I don't I don't know the Holy Quran I thought of the whole I thought of the Holy Quran and you did it you actually beat me to it so that's genius level right there but yeah go ahead yeah yeah the purpose of that was I've been asking the question okay there are you expressed it was you who expressed that there are holes in the narrative all I am asking is to unpack that for me okay that's all I'm asking and I am being rejected. I am being rejected. And I know like apparently rejection makes people to commit suicide. So I'm not going to commit suicide because I'm Christian. I have hope. I love my Lord. So what I've done was I just, I needed visual help. So to just get, get proper answer from Muslims. That's, that's just for that. And it's not only I'm getting proper answer from Muslims. Now, I've got Muslims who got in touch with me asking why did I put holes in their Quran? And my simple answer is, oh, let me show you, share you, share a video with you what your Muslim scholar said. And then from that, now Muslims are seeing they have been lied. They have been lied, they have been lied, and they have been lied. And 21st century that no one wants to talk about it. I think that is very much sad. So, putting holes in the Quran, simply a visual version of there are holes in the narrative, can someone fix it? And it, in, a, in a sense, I am using it to point people to, to the eternal word of God who has holes in his hand and holes in his feet. So that's for that. And regarding the pictures of Muhammad, we need to grow up. Mm -hmm. We need to grow up. Like, if people can draw a picture of a plant, a apple, a dog, or anything, then there is nothing should stop anyone to draw the picture of other individuals or other beings they want to draw. In like, I did show the pictures of Lord Jesus or pictures Charlie have to draw about Christian faith and Christian God. But I never called anyone to get killed for those things. And even I don't think, even though I think those pictures are not very nice at all. But because I grow up, why my God is able to deal with the critics and able to answer those things. But in somehow it doesn't happen in Islam. 
in somehow Islam becomes untouchable. And if you kind of play this victim game and if you kind of pretend, oh, you are untouchable, you are untouchable. Yeah, people are going to use it. I used it. I used it. I used the Charlie Hebdo pictures and I used other pictures I put together. I used the holes in the Quran and David eat the Quran. So people are going to use it until you come in the sense, oh, yeah. Now we have to have proper open debate and discussions. Otherwise, instead of insulting people, instead of calling people deaf, instead of harassing people or stopping people's Patreon, all those kind of things. Now we need to come up with better arguments. I know Allah wasn't able to do so. Muhammad wasn't able to do so. But in 2020, you've got Shek Google, Shek YouTube. You can come up with better arguments and you can have open debates and discussions. And it is all welcome because truth is matter. Mm -hmm. And for me, like my main goal is Yes, there are holes in the Quran. Yes, Muhammad's pictures are not very nice because he doesn't have six pack, all those kind of things. But it all as a tool to talk about or make a point on the problems in Islam and bring people's attention to Lord Jesus Christ. And I think it can only be fixed with Muslims to grow up. Yeah. And uh, I mean, I mean, ladies and gentlemen, just just think about this, because this this, you know, way back in the day, 2006, you started having the, the cartoon riots and things like that. And newspapers wouldn't even republish those cartoons. Uh, Charlie Hebdo was one of the only uh, European publications to republish the cartoons for the sake of, of freedom of speech. The, the 2006 uh, Jilan's Postin or Jilan's Postin uh, cartoons. Uh, just imagine, just imagine if instead of instead of people backing down and cowering in fear because there were riots over these cartoons just imagine that all journalists new york times los angeles times washington post just imagine everyone um british newspapers french newspapers uh american newspapers and just imagine that everyone said hey if you guys are going to start killing over this, we're all going to public. We're all going to publish these cartoons. So learn to stop right now. I don't believe you would have, you would have ever seen another death over a cartoon again. If if the mm. message if the message became, hey, if you get violent over this cartoon, we're going to publish a thousand times as many of the cartoons. If that became the message, if that became the message. I believe you would have never seen another death. I do not. Believe, you wouldn't have had the, the the Charlie Hebdo massacre. You wouldn't have had any of that. Because people would, they would have realized, wait a minute, if we do this, then in the name of freedom of speech, they're going to respond with even more of it. And that would be the opposite of what we want. Instead, what does everyone do? Oh, you're getting violent over this? Well, we'll back down. What message does that send? It sends the message, oh, if you want to control our behavior and control our speech and control our expression and control our publications, just get violent. What did you just do? You encouraged. You encouraged the Charlie Hebdo massacre. You said, "Hey guys, you want you, you want us all to back down? Go slaughter a bunch of people." That will that will send us that will send us the message that I mean that, that that will make us do what you want us to do, right? And notice, it's the same thing. It's the same thing with Hatun. When the British people, when the British police are backing down, oh, we'll remove the speaker if you guys get violent. You're sending a message there. You're sending the wrong message, right? <laughs> just just imagine, just imagine. Uh, a, a violent crowd forming around Hatun and British police come over and say, under no circumstances, under no circumstances, uh, is anyone going to do anything to this woman? And if we have to form a wall of police around her to protect her, that's what we'll do. Uh, but y'all better back up right now. And if you got a problem with it, we'll bring in a thousand more Hatuns. <laughs> we'll bring in a thousand more Hatuns to speak here until you learn that, that you can't do this right now. Right? And this wouldn't have to be the police. But just imagine where everyone said, okay, until you guys learn to deal with Hatun, we're going to different groups from around the world are going to send more people to be in Speaker's Corner every single week until you learn to deal with it. And then then you'll be happy that, that it's that it, it's it's Hatun. Right? And so but that that should be the response. Instead, it's just retreat, 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 retreat. And when 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 Hatun and others finally say, look, we're done retreating. We're, we're standing our ground here. 
then it's, uh, <laughs> well, we'll just have you removed by police. And police will say, don't worry, they're not backing down, but we'll kick them out. Wow. Wow. Awesome stuff. A um, couple comments here. Janet Clements said, uh, Hatun, please buy a life-size Aisha to show how small a nine-year-old really is. I thought about it, actually. Yeah. Uh, hey, hey, Mensch, if you're watching, can you tell us where to buy a, a life-size nine-year-old doll? I bet you know, you freak. <laughs> Sorry, I couldn't I couldn't resist. I know you're watching, Minj. <laughs> or, or, or he could simply just send it to us one instead of us to kind of go out, go out to those certain places to find it. It's much be easier if you just send it to us. Um, let's see. Uh, Jasmine Brown said, "Make the winged origami donkey that Muhammad rode to heaven." Yes, that's already on. That's already on the list. That's already on the list. You got fly. It, see that, that that's the thing. That's kind of what I was missing when I first did it. I'm like I'm like you, Hatun, and then I want I want there to be content in it, right? I, you, I want to do it to make a point, right? Uh, you know, so one might be a, a point about freedom of speech, the first one, but the others I want them to be a point. So I want to make a fly, origami fly, to talk about you know dunking your flies. Uh, I want yeah. to make uh, uh, Barak to to give the story of Muhammad's magic uh, magic donkey. Want to do the goat, uh, the goat, a, an, an origami goat made out of the Quran, eating a piece of the Quran, and this is like a cannibal goat. Um, and then the sheep, of course, that was poisoned and ultimately, uh, ultimately killed Muhammad. Want to do a set of three swans? Oh no, three cranes. Three cranes. The, the crane. The crane is like the first thing anyone who does origami ever learns. Um, but you have the crane. But going to do three cranes that are going to be Allah, Alus, and Manat, who are called the exalted cranes because they would carry your prayers to Allah. So there's like, there's like, uh, I could even. This is this is going to take a while. This is going to take a while, but I even know how to build the entire Kaaba. I know how to build blocks and stuff like that to put together. It takes forever because each, each little block is, is two pieces is two pieces of paper folded up and you can connect them into blocks. But yeah, I can actually build the entire Kaaba. All kinds of awesome stuff coming up in the near future, ladies and gentlemen. And I'm going to keep doing it. And I'm going to keep doing it until there's no threats or anything else over this kind of stuff. Don't have, uh, don't be under the too much pressure. But um, Muhammad's birthday is coming soon, hmm? so you might need to make some present for him. I will do. Does that. he deserve? Does he deserve any birthday present? I don't know. Oh, he deserves one. His birth, his birthday is coming. <laughs> um. Wait a minute. This one says April twenty second. This one says 571. I always see 570. How sure are they of this? What are you checking? Um, I just searched for Muhammad's birthday. It's um, on 28th of October, 2829, Mevlut. Oh, yeah. There are, different, uh, there are different calculations. Yeah. There are different calculations. Well, more birthdays, more origami. That's my, that's my motto. <laughs> uh, ch check this one out. So this is uh, Saqib Muhammad. Check this out. This is so low level, dude. <laughs> this is amateur level, Saqib. Check this out. I really wonder if you guys really want to propagate your religion. You must study basic marketing and psychology at least. You are the hindrance of your cause. So he says we're hindering our cause. Now notice, Saqib, just think about this. If you really thought we were hindering our cause and damaging our own cause, would you be trying to correct us and setting us, set us on the right course here? Would, would, would you be trying to show us a better way of destroying Islam? Huh? Is that what you'd be doing? Would you be showing us a better way of, of showing Muslims the truth? Is that what you'd be doing? No. <laughs> you know what we do is massively effective and is sending even your top apologists into insane panic modes where they're talking about golden showers and uh, hurling racial abuse at people and looking at pornography all day, you know they're having a meltdown over the stuff that we're doing. And you can't stand it. And so this is your theory. Oh, you guys are damaging your ability uh, to propagate your message. <laughs> nice try. Uh, any thoughts on that, Hatun? Well, well, yeah. How would, how would you respond to people saying, hey, wait a minute, Hatun. You, you're trying to show Muslims the truth about Jesus, 
you, you, you want Muslims to be saved and to spend eternity basking in the glory of the Lord Jesus Christ. And here you are drilling holes in the Quran. Aren't you just driving them away and sending them, sending them, a, 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 aren't, aren't you sending them off into, into the darkness because now they'll never, never pay attention to anything you say again? Oh, well, first of all, it is Lord Jesus Christ who saves people. I am just a small tool that he's willing to use me. But from my experiences, what I'm seeing, even just with the whole hole in the Quran, Muhammad from Pakistan left Islam because he was asking the question, why did you put holes in the Quran? And why Muslims are not talking to you? He left Islam and become a Christian. So... Beside that, I know lots of hundreds of Muslims and ex-Muslims who left Islam and become a Christian. And for me, I am more concerned on, I cannot just tell you, oh, Jesus is all about love. Oh, Jesus is all kind, this nice guy. Because you have the idea of Jesus in your mind. And beside that, you have got idea of this man called Muhammad. I've got to destroy them first. I cannot give you something new so that you add Jesus on Muhammad and then mix mix and mash them. That can't happen. I've got to destroy the ideology you have that might be with the whole thing run, that might be with the pictures of Muhammad, or that might be simply asking basic questions. I've got to destroy the belief system you have. Once your belief system is destroyed, we will build something new. And that will be our glorious gospel. Lord Jesus Christ will make his home in your heart. But he can't come to the heart which has been fully covered with the whole Quran and with Muhammad. That needs to be get rid of. And I am just being the one who is helping to get rid of that lies you've been told. Get rid of Islam and run to Lord Jesus Christ. So, uh, I, I also am very much disturbed with the, oh yeah, is this how, how you are gonna bring people to Christ? You ask Muslims, tell me about good news of Islam. Why should I become a Muslim? Answers are, oh well, we don't believe son of God. Oh, Jesus didn't die on the cross. You are doing the same thing. Why there is a problem once I use the same methodology? I don't see any problem with that. Mm -hmm. And idea idea people have is like, oh yeah, go, uh, it, it, yes, our gospel is glorious, our God is amazing and delightful, but that does not mean in any form or any shape God is going to turn blind eye towards false ideologies. I cannot compromise with the ideology because my God cannot compromise with the ideology. I'm just I'm just simply being a tool to destroy the ideology so that we can have good foundation for our glorious gospel. Yeah, and uh, it's funny here. Saqib says you must study basic marketing and psychology. Um, Saqib, if you've been following Hatun's work at Speaker's Corner, or you've been following my channel, you should know Muslims can't stay away from us. Muslims are drawn to us. They feel the power and they can't stay away, right? Hatun shows up at Speaker's Corner. What happens? A mob forms around her, right? <laughs> what, are you, what, what are you doing here? What are you doing here, Saqib? You can't stay away. You can't stay away. And so it's simply, it's simply false. Rather, we understand, we understand that many, many Muslims out there, they're looking for fearlessness. They're looking for boldness. They're looking for confidence. They're looking for, for things like that. And so when Hatun steps out there with a Quran with holes in it, and I start folding up your book, you're like, what? You mean they're not scared? They're not scared of the power of the great God Allah? No, we're not, because <laughs> it's a false religion. 
And then you start wondering why. Why can we be so confident that Islam is false? Because you guys run around. You guys, uh, Muslims run around with this little myth that, oh, they all know that it's true. They all know that it's true. They just, they want to be perverts and stuff. And, and they, they, they don't follow it because they want money and they want to sin and stuff like that. And that's why, that's why they, uh, that's why they don't follow Islam. But deep down, they know it's true. And you can't get your mind around the fact that someone who, no, we, nope, this is, Islam is absolute nonsense. We're happy to show it. And so that's why you can't stay away, Saqib. So it's actually the opposite, actually the exact opposite of what you're saying. Um, and, and, and Saqib, you know it. That's why you're trying to get us to stop. That's why everyone's trying to get us to stop. But you can't stop this train. Just so you know. All right, we'll do one more comment here. This is from Notaverse. Notaverse said, uh, while not officially legislated, the reality is that Western nations are very much indeed already subject to some aspects of Sharia. This subjugation is only slated to increase. Hatun is shining an ever important spotlight. And notice, ladies and gentlemen, this is, uh, this is everywhere. On, on the one hand, you have it when governments actually step in and stop people from criticizing Islam, things like that, things that like just what just happened at Speaker's Corner. You also have it with with companies, as I've been exposing eBay, that you can post you can post items that say the nastiest things in the world about Christians. You can post items that call for violence against Christians. You can have that. There's no problem. But if you post something that could simply hurt the feeling. We're not talking about stuff that, that is calling for violence or something like that. If it's, or e even that's criticizing Muslims. There, if you post an item that could even potentially offend a Muslim, they say you have to take it down. And everyone's doing this. Hollywood's doing this. Journalists are doing this. Governments are doing this. Everyone's doing this. Everyone's, hey, let's, let's, let's make these special rules that only apply to Islam. Um, and we say no. And so what happens? Police got to come after us. Any final thoughts on this stuff, uh, Hatun? Um, final thoughts? Um, I am planning to be at Speaker's Corner week after week. As long as I used to say I breathe, but like right now I'm saying like as long as I am allowed to do so. And however, however, I am aware that police is also aware that there are certain individuals who wants to kill me, attack me, rape me uh, from the religion of peace and who wants to take away my freedom of speech. Uh, they don't want me to speak the truth. They don't want me to expose their ideology. They don't want me to talk about my Lord. Uh, that will be their choice. Uh, I have not broken any law or anything. I will be turning up the speaker's corner and I am very actually I would say I'm very much respectful to the Muslims not to Islam but to Muslims week after week at speaker's corner and I would expect I would expect country like England to not only protect my freedom of speech but also protect the freedom of speech Muslims and other individuals have and keep speaker's corner as good place where people have healthy and heated discussions and it is platform for me where i can preach the gospel of lord jesus christ where i can expose the ideology of islam so that individuals becomes the followers of lord jesus christ so i'll be at speakers gone on sunday and i am hoping that there will be muslims who will be able to explain to me about the holes in the narrative so well, Hatun, uh, since there are 1.6 billion Muslims in the world who believe that the Quran has been perfectly preserved right down to the letter, and we know that they only believe this because of all the evidence that they have for the perfect preservation of the Quran, we know, we know that there are, there's going to be no shortage of Muslims approaching yeah. you, approaching you at Speaker's Corner and saying, Hatun, we don't want you we don't want you kicked out we just want to answer you and so we're going to calmly show you and provide evidence to you that the quran has been perfectly preserved right down to the letter in spite of all the evidence proving that it hasn't and so uh i'm sure you can look forward to that yep 
I'll be there. Man, make, I'll be there from one o'clock. So make sure, because lots of Muslims will be there to prove me that Quran has been per- perfectly preserved. Please turn up on time so that we don't do chit chat and waste time. Mm-hmm. And uh, all right, and everyone, the link to Hatun's channel, DCCI uh, Ministries, is in the description box. Let me just double check and make sure it's down there. Uh, yes, DCCI link to the channel is in the description box. You definitely want to, um, you definitely want to uh, follow <laughs> follow Hatun's channel uh, and a couple others. Uh, what is it? Soko Films um, and Bob the Builder's channel and, and a lot of the channels of the uh, uh, the people who go to Speakers Corner, so you can follow the latest of what's going on there. Uh, I see everyone talking about my my famous mystery bags. Yep. Woo, here it is. Don't you all want one? Don't you all want one? Yes, there will be plenty of mystery bags for everybody. Um, although everything is going to be one of a kind, ladies and gentlemen. I'm not going to I'm not going to I'm not going to sell some object and then make a bunch of them, right? Everything is one of a kind. One of a kind only. I'm going to I'm going to finish all my origami, then I'm going to do some paper mache sculptures. Then I'm going to turn to painting with only large Quran pages as my canvas until everyone understands that you don't get filing over this stuff. All right. Thanks to uh, Hatun for joining us and Hatun, you're Thank welcome you. back. Welcome back anytime to discuss anything that's going on over there on the other side of Thank the Atlantic. You. Thank you everyone for watching and catch y'all next time.